Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we've built a mono black deck around some lich shenanigans. I did some pretty wacky stuff on this one. It was the idea of making a lich deck, so therefore we have to have phylactery lich and some amount of artifacts. And then I also wanted lich's mastery in it because they both say lich. And that involved uh, using a lot of life gain artifacts with the Lich's Mastery and Araska's Relic. You can sacrifice to gain three life and draw a card when you have the City's Blessing. It also added more life spells to the deck. And Josue Vest Lich Knight. Then I had four Karns in this spot, but it wasn't really flexible enough to deal with all the things I wanted to deal with. And uh, these don't remove everything I need to remove or do everything I need them to do. So instead, I built a Masterminds Acquis Acquisition Toolbox sideboard where you can go get the card that you might need for any specific matchup to clean off the board, take advantage of a lot of mana if you have a lot of mana, or stabilize your early game if that's what you need to do. So we've got the sideboard over here. It's got a number of just interesting bullets, and we'll see which one of those we want to use. The Chaos Wand in particular calls to me. And there's also a Tetsamok Primal Death if you need another big sweeper and you have a ton of mana. And of course the Immortal Sun is probably one that may come down often since we don't use any Planeswalkers. We can certainly take away the opponent's Planeswalkers. I also found I masterminded for a land rather often, just trying to hit my land drops in a game that wasn't where I wasn't under a ton of pressure or the Lich was holding the board. So I added more land to my sideboard so that when I go fetch a land, it has some utility, uh, such as the Arch of Razga, and so that it didn't take away from the main deck's three Cabal Strongholds, which are used to make sure that we can make a frick ton of mana and go off with Lich's Mastery drawing a ton of cards. This deck is pretty fun, and it's interesting, and I'm excited to show you the games, so let's go do it. Fountain of Renewal, Thematic Compass, Masterminds Acquisition, and Vraska's Contempt, we can keep it. I do apologize, there was something off with the resolution on what I recorded. I have since fixed it, but the deck may have looked a little funny, and maybe one of my previous recordings may have looked funny too. Somehow the resolution on my Streamlabs OBS got very large. Now you may remember Nighthawk from the Duels days, one of our everybody's favorite opponents. Wait a minute. Nighthawk 18, that's not our Nighthawk, it's an imposter. So we have an interesting choice already of whether or not to get the map going or to get compass going so that I don't miss another land. I actually like the compass here. This deck needs land drops very badly, and I think I can stall a turn, maybe two turns, on getting my map going to get my compass going. And the opponent with land, land, nothing so far. I think that the best thing here is to fetch another land. The treasure map can wait. As long as I'm hitting my land drops and not under pressure, this deck is pretty happy since it can deal with most things. And there is the thing. It's a Wayward Sword Tooth. Ah, we shuffled in a Lich, which would have been so perfect here. So the opponent doubles their lands and gets the Sword Tooth going. Hmm, how to play it from here? I think now I do... I, I could Vraska's Contempt this, which would cut off more double landing. I could go fetch some kind of removal spell, something to take out big creatures. I have a feeling that Tetsamok is a really good card for the matchup. There's actually a lot of options. Maybe just passing and holding up the Vraska's Contempt is best to see what our opponent plays, but we could also deal with that on our turn. I think I like going to get the, top the Primal Death, as it's just a absolutely massive uh, game changer in the mid-range matchup. And it looks like we're against some kind of a dinosaur shenanigans. Very much so. There's two ways to play the tutor. You can play it and then try to figure out um, what you are searching for, or you can play it and, uh, or you can think about what you want before you play it, which is why you'll see me tanking probably a lot. It might look boring, but the truth is, I think that it's best to think about what you want before you cast it. All right, Lich's Mastery is here. It looks like we're up against an experimental frenzy deck. Fountain of Renewal can help with the life game, but the Frenzy itself is going to be a huge problem, and we'll need our own card advantage engine in the Lich's Mastery, I think. Let's go ahead and deploy this map. 
Let's also reveal the Tetsamok and put some nasty counters on these things. They'll probably get to hit us once, and then we'll play the giant dino. And we'll pass the turn over. We're likely to take nine plus a Banefire, so the Fountain of Renewal is going to be working on overtime. And of course, Lich's Mastery is going to need to join the party. So Banefire in hand. The opponent does not hit the city's blessing. They don't have a permanent to play. They actually needed two. So I'm, this is a break. I expected to take the full damage on this turn. And there's the Frenzy. Let the shenanigans begin. So if the opponent had played that first, I think the chances, like, yeah, they could have attacked me for more damage. It's a little unfortunate. And they have a Banefire in hand that they kept on top. So maybe the plan is to sack the Frenzy later and Banefire me to hell. All right, let's see what's on top of the deck. It's a Swamp. I like to hit my land drops, but we've been doing a good job of it. So now I'm going to ease off that a little. And let's play a giant 6-6 death touch creature that wipes our opponent's creatures out. Now they have a but now they have a frenzy, and they have a bunch of mana. As long as they don't hit a splattering of land, they should be able to have a pretty good turn, which is scary, because I do need to Oh, Guy's Blessing. It's kind of an interesting card to throw in a deck like that. Guy's Blessing is one of those cards that a lot of uh casual and newer players really believe in like a lot and i I'm, I'm not as convinced that fountain of renewal is trying to save us from this bane fire that is a good draw because now we can play lich's mastery and navigator compass and flip our thematic compass because of seven lands and activate our treasure map now is there anything i should fear with haste there may be <laughs> also, Banefire to the face for a lot can be quite the story here. But we do have a lot of permanents and a lot of cards. So we have plenty to, to sacrifice. Opponent's reading that. Might go for a Lightning Strike now. Okay, that's pretty good. So what do we exile? I think we can get rid of... I don't really want to get rid of the land. I want to flip the compass. Hmm. Well... We'll get rid of this. As much as I don't want to, I'll get rid of this. And the Fountain of Renewal could go, but that's more life as well. Hmm, would I rather have the land that flips and can take out the opponent's attackers or the Tetsamok? I'd rather have the Tetsamok. And here's a bunch of cards. I'm gonna feel this Banefire though. But I do have, like, I can get rid of the compass. If I want, I can get rid of the map. Although the map is, yeah, now that's not flipping anytime soon, that's a pretty good get rid of. And I could get rid of a lot of the land. The opponent goes for the Tetsamok. They could have made me sacrifice six permanents and or discard three cards. But I, I don't blame them for that play. They had to, the Tetsamok was going to finish things eventually. Now Fountain of Renewal will draw us a card from Lich's Mastery. We're still before our draw step, so I'm going to use the treasure map. That's a good one. That is a tough one to deal with. We'll draw. We don't have a way to gain life this turn, unfortunately. And let's put the counter on the map, because once it flips, it still has the counter, and it's pretty hard to target. So it is the most valuable thing, which is kind of awkward, but I want to be able to exile the compass or the fountain if I need to, to my opponent's burn spells. And now we'll pass it over. Yeah, we're probably another life gain effect or two from really going off. The opponent with a wild growth walker. And a jade light ranger. Combo assembled. Okay. How about more walkers? Not yet. So I do enjoy this Experimental Frenzy deck. I made a video of it in the last season with the Explorer Package, Experimental Frenzy, Wayward Swordtooth, Banefire, all of those things. Return of the Frenzy. And those, I mean, the Frenzy is a really tough card to deal with. There's no question about that. All right, that will take something out and draw two cards. So that's a keeper. So we'll gain this life, we'll draw this card. Before we scry again, let's flip 
flip our map. So now the land has the counter on it, which is a pretty hard thing for the opponent to deal with unless they run something bizarro like Star of Extinction. And let's keep digging. Josu, now we're talking. All right, draw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can do it now. It's pretty broken. I guess we'll attack first with the Lich. Send a message. Opponent doesn't have good blocks or anything. And let's create the overwhelming board presence that we all know and love. Liliana's brother, Josu Vest the Lich Knight, and all his zombies. And we'll see what kind of frenzy our opponent can, comp can compile that could possibly dance with this devil. It's a little bit of explore there. Wild Growth Walker. Again, marking upkeep when I have treasure map. You've probably seen me do this a number of times in this season because we play treasure map so often. But there are times when you really want to get an upkeep scry to try to make your next draw a very good one. Bound Craig. And so the opponent gains what they can. They haven't given up on this yet. They pitched their frenzy, though, just to play another branch walker. They might have another frenzy. Raska Relic continues the going offness. Raska's Contempt. Hard to argue about that one in this spot. And we'll go to main. I think I'll try to draw into... I think I'll pitch this first. And I'm going to try to draw into a Cabal Stronghold because that would make so much mana. So we'll draw a card and then draw three more from the life gain. No Cabal Stronghold, though. We could do the cycle again. I don't think that's very good. Let's go for the Raska's Contempt. Draw two more cards. There's a Mastermind's Acquisition. Can we just find a lethal here? I think so. If the opponent can block one, two, three, then they're still taking 16. So I just need to remove something else, anything else. So I think I have a Nightmare's Thirst I can go get, but I might be one mana short of that. Ouch. All right, we've got four mana. The Mastermind can get something that costs zero. No, it cannot. There's, there's nothing quite on that level. Um, and another Nightmare's Thirst isn't going to come off the top here. So I don't think I have lethal, but we have a really devastating attack. Yeah, that's not going to work because of the Menace, though. Oh, it is lethal. I'm good. <laughs> Everything's fine here. They, they, the menace, the menace is going to cut them off. Uh, they blocked wrong. All right, that works too. Forgot about that menace, but the opponent could have blocked on the Lich Knight to last one more turn. Okay, that Chandra avatar is giving me some red vibes, so I'm going to keep this hand. Here comes the Fountain. Fountain, not a good card on its own. You really want a Flactory Lich or Lich's Mastery to pay it off. And, oh, Godless Shrine? Hmm, well, unless it's Vampires. But my first thought is Esper Control. That treasure map off the top, clutch. Basically amazing every time you get to draw a treasure map. And what do we got here? We do have Vampires, okay. It's probably a decent matchup. Do I need to take the land? I think I take the land. Want to just make sure I hit all my land drops for a while. Can cast my spells and set up. So any reason to crave this now before our opponent untaps, they might have that two mana. What is that card? A moment of triumph is in those starter decks. So I'm going to use the moment of craving on my turn, not on my opponent's turn. Just because it's an instant doesn't mean you shouldn't play it on your turn sometimes. Legion's Lieutenant is here. And if the opponent has the Moment of Triumph, they can protect it, which is a little annoying. Let's keep the upkeep treasure map scries. 
I don't want to cast Vraska's Contempt this turn for sure, because I just want to keep the map going. So now I have four lands. I have a map who's about to flip and become my fifth land and produce six, seven, eight. So I don't feel like I need any more swamps off the top. And flooding starts to get riskier and riskier. There is a Lich's Mastery. I'm curious if the opponent is going to have something to play. So now they might have that moment of triumph open, which is why we don't play the moment of craving here. It's always around playing uh, around when your opponent has mana untapped is typically what you want to watch for in standard. Well, that's frustrating. I do think that my opponent has the moment of triumph. So I think I should keep holding the moment of craving, which is too bad. Let's mark that upkeep because I do plan to flip this map. And I'm going to keep gaining life from the Fountain of Renewal rather than uh, drawing the card here because I do need to buy some time. All right, let's activate the treasure map. We're going to also probably want sweepers if Call of the Feast becomes a thing. Another land. Do I take this land? It would give me four mana plus the Contempt, so I can get rid of one of these lieutenants. I'll take it. I would prefer a Cabal Stronghold, but you do what you gotta do. We'll hold up the Vraska's Contempt this time. I can't think of something that they would cast on their turn to save their creature from an exile effect. And we're getting into a spot where we can slam the Mastery, play something like Moment of Craving immediately, draw two cards, have a Fountain of Renewal to draw an extra card every turn, and there's the tap out. All right. So there's a bunch of critters. Let's see if the opponent wants to attack in here. They attack with both. So I'm going to play the Vraska's Contempt, get rid of one of them, gain two life, take two damage, pass the turn. Here's the life, here's a card off the top, that's a very good one. Let's play the Lich's Mastery, let's sacrifice this for black and play the Navigator's Compass for three life and three cards. And while the opponent is tapped out, yep, you guessed it. Let's get rid of the other Legion Lieutenant to reduce the damage we take next turn. Now, Navigator's Compass is just a trinket on the battlefield that you can sacrifice to your Lich's Mastery, so you'll see me exile that pretty early. And aside from that, we have three cards in the graveyard to exile before we have to get rid of anything from our hand. Typically, the order for Lich's Mastery is Graveyard hand battlefield but in case of cards that sit there like navigator's compass you can go battlefield for the garbage on the battlefield and then the graveyard and then the hand and then the battlefield the opponent with a third lieutenant getting six damage in here it's pretty annoying so what are we exiling we'll go with one two three four five and six and keep all of our lands and such intact. That is a frustrating one to bump into. We're going to have to draw some answers. Sacrificing eight permanents a turn is not acceptable. Ooh, ugh. the flood is getting very real. Let's go with the Arazka Relic first. It can gain us some life, draw us four more cards, and possibly find us what we need. And I'm going to use it before I play my land in case we find a Cabal Stronghold, which can generate a lot more mana than playing one Swamp. Moment of Craving, that's something, but if our opponent has that card Moment of Triumph, then we're getting set up pretty bad. There is there is a Masterminds Acquisition. What could we go get? We've already gained three life. We could go get the Nightmare's Thirst. We can also play a Phylactery Lich and try to block but the opponent could have a way to exile it or remove it. Basically, I have two mana off this. We can use Compass for one, and then the other for Nightmare's Thirst. So if I'm going to do that anyway, let me lead with the Compass. Now you might be saying save the acquisition and draw Ritual Asset. I don't really like that very much. Let's go to outside the game. And do remember, we've gained plenty of life this turn, so Moment of Triumph won't save the Legion Lieutenant here. But we do have to do it on our turn, which unfortunately means we'll have to discard. 
because its target creature gets minus x minus x, where x is the amount of life you gained this turn. So do we get that moment of triumph here? Does the opponent not realize how much this is for? Oh, they're going with murder. Does that stop the life gain? No, it does not. We're still going to gain a life. So that's a bit of a mistake. You can tell because there's a period after the life part. Or no. Did I get that wrong? Did we draw that card? Hmm. I have it wrong. Oh, I know. This part, The this has to come after the target creature part, I think. Anyway, post in comments if you know exactly what I said or did wrong there. I'm sure some of you astute magic viewers can't wait to tell me what how I am wrong, which is totally justified in this case. Oh, could have exiled the compass. Got threw me for a loop there. Got to get back on the horse. All right, but it looks like we're still in great shape here because we got rid of the opponent's Legion Lieutenant. So all well that ends well. Do I have another way to gain some life this turn? Not exactly. Let's head back outside the game, see what we can get. We're going to have five extra mana after this acquisition. We could get the Cry of the Canarium, but Ritual of Soot will actually do better if the opponent still has that Moment of Triumph in their hand. And there goes their stuff. And we will pass turn. Setting up to use our Lich. Opponents passing turn with no threats. That's got to be pretty much the end of their run, I think. We're drawing at least two cards a turn, and it could get much more intense. So let's play Thematic Compass. And that's going to transform into a land, so that's what I like to put my Lich uh, token on. Because again, the lands are a little harder to remove than artifacts, typically speaking. Then we can also go with Colorless here, play you. We can try to draw that Cabal Stronghold before we play our land for the turn. Still no Cabal Strongholds. Hmm. The card is certainly hiding on me. So we could hold up Moment of Craving. I think we'll just play the other fountain. Since we'll still have Moment of Craving available when the compass transforms into a land on end step for having seven lands on the battlefield. And we'll see how the opponent handles the Lich. Murder? Probably not going to do it. Uh, I know it's not going to do it. They have to get rid of the Spires of Arazka to make the Lich die. And it looks like they're passing the turn. I could Moment of Crave my own Lich to draw cards, but I don't think that's, at this point, that's necessary. I think we're far enough ahead. Now we just have to have our Flactory Liches close the game. We have to play around, settle the wreckage a little bit. Let's go fetch what? We could get the Josu Vess. That's usually a quick way to end the game. Do we have enough mana to fetch and play it? Not yet. I could get a Cabal Stronghold to make a ton of mana, but that seems like a waste when I've got all these cards. But it does kind of draw the deck and go off, so yeah, let's have some fun. Search your library for a card. There you are. Still one more. One more to go on the Mastermind's acquisitions as well. Play you. And we'll put a counter over here. We'll play you. That'll, that'll draw us more cards, but we can wait till our opponent's turn to do that so that we don't have to discard. And we can get our scry on now. I might end up searching uh, the sideboard for a duress for the Settle the Wreckage that I think the opponent has. I go with a seal away. Well, that exile removal can be very frustrating. I could 
kill my own thing and then it ends up in the graveyard, but I don't have ways to get it back. And the opponent is playing a creature deck, so I may as well hang on to these. I'm sure something better will happen with them. Here comes a pride mate. Cool. Here, kitty kitty. Let's see if the opponent is ready with that moment of triumph yet. And now we've come far enough in the game that we can respond. Oh, okay. Let's try that again. It's a nightmare's thirst is what they've been hanging on to this whole time. Murder. Okay. You got it. Well, it keeps me from drawing stuff, but we'll sacrifice this and draw four cards anyway. And then draw another bonus cards on the upkeep with the fountain. There's the Josu. And the opponent's down to no cards, so Josu will close quickly. Josu plus Lich should be dead next turn unless they draw a perfect answer. Let's make a million mana. Because it's fun. And then we'll kick the Josu Vess. Resolve that. Play you. And you. And we've got two mana left over, so we may as well use our maps. And the deck just going off with options here. How, how could I how could I get rid of a treasure map? It just does so much work for me. And pass it over. And does the opponent draw Cleansing Nova for the win? Not this time. Sorry, I got some triggers to resolve. I can't help it. I think the opponent drew an instant. Otherwise, I don't think we'd be clicking through this. Maybe I do want to try to find a duress. Again, playing around Settle the Wreckage or something of that nature. I guess I shouldn't be, shouldn't be too sloppy, right? Let's make some mana. Keep using maps. We're looking for Masterminds Acquisition. We'll go get a Duress and then we'll shut the thing down. There's one more in the deck. It's got to be near the top now. I'll draw three cards. Because obviously, I mean, if you're with me on this, you understand. Settle is like the only way I lose, so I may as well play around it. So what you got? <laughs> One time! For all, this game goes out to everybody who says I play around stuff too much. All of you. I know it doesn't make me right, but at least I got this. I got this game to show you. This hand is kind of awkward, but it's interesting because we have Cabal Stronghold into Navigator's Compass, which can turn this into a swamp, so it produces black mana. Let's give it a try. And then I have to decide which to play on turn one. I may want Moment of Craving on turn two if it's a red deck, but I want Fountain of Renewal if it's a red deck too, because it can gain so, like, more. the longer it's in play, the more value you got off the card. Oh boy. Merfolk is a little tough because they go so wide so fast. Um, I'm going to go with the map and try to scry my way into more land. So I'm setting the upkeep scry for sure. We need to Masterminds Acquisition as soon as possible for Ritual Set. Uh-huh. The uh, shuffling, like the, uh, the algorithm that selects your opponent, it doesn't know what to do with this deck. So I end up playing against a lot of Merfolk, a lot of Vampires and a lot of different brews. Now, do I play the compass here, or do we crave? I think we crave. We'll just hold that up in case our opponent's going to play a Merfolk Mistbinder. 
We're going to keep trying to scry our way to land with the treasure map. Here it comes. So if they're not going to play the Mistbinder, I may as well use this now. Since they already had an island, uh, if they had like a Hinterland Harbor, I could have taken out the Silver Gill Adept and taken less damage here. Unclaimed territory. And the fish roll on. Deep Root Elite. Definitely a card I'd like to kill. Jade Bearer. Make things huge. All right, we have to hit a... I wonder if I should just take the draw step, because the best thing that could happen to me is hitting the land off the top. But if I miss a land drop here, I'm in so much trouble. So this is a really tough call. I'm going to flip the map next turn anyway. That'll get the Mastermind done, but if I hit a land here, then next turn when it flips, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. If I draw a seventh land, I can Mastermind and cry the Canarium the same turn, but that not be, might not be good enough anymore. This is a really tough choice. All right, I'm going to use the map, and I'm going to dig for land. Yeah, that would have been a bad draw. And we hit. It's pretty fortunate. Let's play the compass just for the life buff. I don't think we can afford to slow roll it and wait for a Lich's Mastery this game. I'm definitely flipping the map next turn. I could mastermind for a land and then flip it, but I think that's a horrible idea when I need sweepers. So I'm going to upkeep map for sure. Probably sacrifice a treasure to mastermind and then figure it out from there. The opponent does their damage. Let's see if they commit more to the board. They will not. That's good for us. I know that they might be slowly building a hand of stuff, but right now I need time. And if they're willing to give it to me, I will take it. The Lich. That is really good when none of... That's going to make them play to the board now more. And for those of you saying I can't cast it, uh, that's actually not the case. I have the Navigator's Compass. So we turn this into a swamp. We play the Lich. And we use the Compass, I guess? Yeah. Everything else I might wish to sacrifice. That's going to force the opponent, without any evasive merfolk, to put more things on the board. And that's going to make Ritual of Soot even better. And right now, we can Mastermind into Ritual of Soot if we choose to. All right, stuff is happening. Here they come. This is all playing out very, very well. All right. Still don't have good attacks. The, the Lich is ready to nom on whatever you want to send. Oh my. So the opponent says, I'm going to get value while I can. They're expecting a sweeper as well. In that case, what's the best block? It's probably the Adept. Just save my life total as much as possible. All right, down to 14. My Wall of Lich is online. We gain a life back up to 15. Should I be masterminding here? I'm giving up that many treasures to go get a ritual set? So just so you know, this doesn't produce extra mana because it says basic swamp. If I use a compass to turn any of these into a swamp, I don't get more mana. That was uh, something I learned earlier. I do think I just set my opponent all the way back. Don't, don't mess around. Don't mess around while they're tapped out. Let's set them all the way back to square one. They are stuck on land. They've been stuck on three lands for a few turns. And let's clock them with the Lich. Since they probably can't deal with it, that 5-5 five, five indestructible will put them in a situation where they have to start blocking it quickly. Danger Will Robinson. Danger. Cumena. With a blue open. Is it a spell pierce? A dive down. Feels like a dive down. All right. Well, let's play carefully around that. And the opponent's going to scoop it up. I think they realize they're going to fall too far behind to the Lich. And that will be it. 
So this hand is a turn three Lich. Uh, I don't know when Josu is going to matter. We have an Araz Karelic. It's a little disjointed. We go map, then we don't scry. We put the Lich on it. But I think you keep this hand. There are some decks in the format that cannot really beat the Lich. And artifact removal isn't what it used to be with a Braid being out of the format. People don't play Bedevil very much. Uh, white is one deck that can wreck you because of Conclave Tribunal, though. So this might get ugly. Look out, friends. Our hand doesn't really do other things, and they are off to the races with the triple one-drop uh, start. So we might just be toast next turn if they have, like, Legion's Landing, History of Banalia. You know, all the things their deck usually has. The Elephant. All these things. Just all that stuff. Okay. Danto. They missed a land drop. So we're looking at some three drops in hand. And it didn't stick, which means they may not have the Conclave Tribunal. So let's put it to the test. And then we'll got to work on flipping this map as quickly as we can. Land found. Snubs again. We're on eight. Oh, they did have the tribunal. So either they drew it or the stick was just invisible. That's epically sad. <laughs> that is not good. All right, down to nine. Our opponent with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one permanent, and they ascend these. If I block here with a Josu, I take. 10, so I have to Contempt. I guess that's the play. And I may as well do it now to try to keep these from ascending, so let's exile the Adanto Vanguard. But I don't think there's a way I get back into this game. Not today. Land, and is it a permanent? It is. All right, down to one. Without a sweeper in the main deck, there was really no comeback option, and that will do. Okay, we've got the early artifact curve. Let's hope it can hold off the aggro. We're up against a Nissa avatar. Let's see if there's any correlation to mono green Stompy. There really hasn't been much correlation for quite a while in avatar to deck. So I just like to overblow that as something to talk about early in the game. Human. Got some kind of a human deck. Okay. So because I drew the relic, I really like playing treasure map here. Then next turn I can play relic and activate map. Ramping and scrying at the same time. We are going to need some ways to deal with threats. This hand is light on exactly that. The opponent with the unclaimed territory goes straight to combat. Okay, there's a mountain and a hero precinct one. This is going to get, they're, they're going wide. So this will be another case where we want very badly to masterminds for sweepers. Stay alive and find sweepers and masterminds acquisitions or find a way to do big mana quickly for Josu. We need to keep hitting lands definitely. We have thematic compass and more treasure maps. We also just need ways to stay alive. Sixteen. What else you got? Opponent is committed to perfect sequencing. Here is a Dauntless Bodyguard protecting the hero. And no extra play. So I'm thinking that Heroic Reinforcements might be a thing, but there's no white mana yet. Let's mark the upkeep for a stop just in case. I'm not sure if I want to use it or not. I don't want that right now. I think that this would be pretty bad in this spot. Right? Yeah, yeah, not now, not now. Hmm, I marked the I did not mark the upkeep, but as it turns out, I'm actually kind of glad. Everything's fine. Uh we can play Josu now and keep progressing the map. Or we can play the Josu army. Now let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five. This is this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need one more mana and like two more turns to make it happen. 
I think it's doable. Let's go with other map. Let's go with compass or map activations. Map activations also help hit land drops, and we already hit our land this turn. Compass isn't going to do anything for at least two turns, so I think map activations are much better to try to get to the right cards. Buy me time, make a million knights. Oh boy, that's the heroic reinforcements. They didn't play it yet. I guess we can always hope they don't have it, right? What else can you do? Let's mark the up let's mark the upkeep this time. The opponent made a colorless. They're undoing it, they're redoing it. They clearly have a play. Boros Challenger. Okay. And let's go ahead and get our scry on. Navigator's Compass can buy us some time with life. This is, though, so much damage if the opponent has heroic reinforcements. I don't think I can beat it. One more mana. Flip that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not nearly enough for the Lich Knight. How about the damage I'm about to take? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I will be at 12. This would be 13. 14? No, 9, 11. So I'm not in danger of dying to life total. So I'm going to put this on the bottom. I mean, I am to a heroic reinforcements anyway. The 3 life won't matter there. What I really want is there, yeah, some piece of removal. I think that's what I can best do. So let's gain a life, draw a card. I think I go for this now just to not let my opponent have the untap here. Anyway, we'll definitely flip this. Don't need that. Do I? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I guess I do. Now we can sacrifice this for life if we decide to take that route. We can play the compass just to have it on the battlefield, but then I can't activate the map, and moving the map forward seems better. And I can't flip the compass here. So, all right. Sorry. It's a pretty interesting turn with a lot going on and trying to figure out how to best combat with my opponent. I want to do this now because Integrity in Intervention is a card that somehow sometimes in these Mardu Precinct decks, and the opponent tapped their mana in a way that doesn't allow them to play that card. So let's get that played on our main phase. And we'll pass it on over. Another reason to do it this way is we can sacrifice the Relic for three life if the opponent somehow gets us down to exactly enough. Perhaps we'll see a Tajik here? Yep. That is a little obnoxious. And we'll see how much damage the opponent has for output here. Mentor, yes. Mentor, yes. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm not dead. So I don't need to sacrifice the relic, and I don't really want to, so I can kick the Josu. If the opponent goes for it now, okay, so now that is lethal. Exactly, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So now we're at a spot where we have to do this. I'm going to draw that swamp because I need it. And once it, I need it to kick off the Josu. And I'm going to use the treasure map. Black 3 Lich is, I don't think, ideal at this time, as good as it might be. And down to 3 life. We'll go up to 4, thankfully, so we can't get burnt out by intervention. Now, upkeep. Do I have to flip this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is 9. We do have to flip it anyway. Therefore, I may as well use it now and make sure that my draw step is pretty good. 
Don't need bonus land. Big mana. All right, how much mana can I generate here? This is one, two, three, four to generate four, so it doesn't net mana. Six, seven, eight, nine. I'm one short of playing a compass or a moment of craving, which is a little bit frustrating. I'm going to activate this anyway in case I'm an idiot. I know it produces at least four, so I'm not losing anything. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, same same situation. So let's go down to one treasure left and kick the Lich Knight. Come at me, bro. I got my own army. We are the knights who say... And it is a Mortify, okay. That drops a creature. Still have more creatures than you. and the opponent passes the turn, we get up to five. I'm going to draw an extra card, see if that changes the play for the turn. Raska's Contempt. The opponent does have an Integrity Intervention open, so going for a Moment of Craving here is a little bit risky. Let's play the land. We could activate the Stronghold for some bonus mana, but I don't think it matters much here. I'm just going to play the compass, flip the compass, and wait for the opponent to act. Let's hold back the knights. Not in a hurry to get aggressive when it's 5 to 20. The opponent shocks for land 5. What do they have in mind? Swift Blade Vindicator, sure. And the last card is another Swift Blade Vindicator, so red, I, this is human. Yeah, I guess to play both of them, they did need to shock there. All right, well, with the hand empty, let's hold on to these. I might draw a Lich's Mastery. Let's just hold on to this until the opponent decides to get into combat. Oh boy. What's the find? A cry of the canarium would clear everything. A golden demise might need to be in my sideboard for exactly a moment like this. Uh, Tetsumak is probably really good. These, what are you protecting? Nothing? And what are you protecting? Nothing? Okay. Let's tap like this and make the mana. It's, it's a plus one, plus one on the mana. We could also get the Immortal Sun, but I think that it's Tetsuvok. And then we decide whether or not we want to reveal it. Because next turn we can have, see, one, two, three, four, five, and then activate it. So we can play it for four next turn. If we reveal it here, the opponent's just going to attack with everything anyway. And I really don't want that. And I'd rather hold the mana up. So I'm not going to reveal that I got Tetsumok. Oh boy. What's coming off the top? Is it Heroic Reinforcements? It's Judith. It's a good one. Let's see if that makes the opponent decide they want to get into combat. Oh, they do. Oh, they do. They're, they feel it here. So let's see where they point their mentor triggers. The Vindicator. So we'll resolve that. And we'll resolve that. We can turn those Vindicators around. The opponent doesn't have the mana to save a Tajik. This is going to get really ugly, and I think they're just going to scoop when they find out what's going to happen. So you can block there, you can block there, there, there there. Over there too. Nothing, nothing. Yep. And then one of these will get double blocked like this. And then this one's coming through. 
For this one, we'll turn it around with Spires of Arazka. So the one that's not being blocked, that's you. So now it's not attacking. And then the last mana, we'll exile Judith the Scourge Diva. We could use Moment of Craving, but this keeps Judith from triggering at all. And here comes the, the Cavalcade of Calamity, I guess you could say. So now I didn't need Tetsumok anymore. That's the way it goes. Let's make some mana. Let's reveal Tetsumok for the Swift Blade Vindicator and play it to blow up the Swift Blade Vindicator. We could have also just Moment of Craved it, but I think now getting the 6-6 onto the battlefield is the right move. And let's turn this corner. Their board has been decimated. Their field has been wiped. The combat has been annihilated. And Judith has been sent to exile. Where will you turn if the dinosaur defeats you? What then? Another Tajik. Can't really attack. And I'm going to hold... I might draw Lich's Mastery, which would be a good reason to play the Moment of Craving on my turn, because I draw some cards. But it's not a big deal. So, Moment of Craving. Treasure map, scry, using that bonus mana. A relic is three life and a card, and it's hard to turn down. And the beats. One more turn of that, and we'll be looking at game over. Off the top, it is heroic reinforcements. A little too late. The opponent attacks with one. I could... So if I draw... I'm not going to turn it around, because now if I draw one removal spell, it's lethal. So I'm going to take the damage. All right, let's make mana. Let's check our top card. No. Let's play the relic. Sacrifice it. Three life and a card. Black three lich. Do I have one more card to draw? I can pitch the fountain. Go for that lethal. And that did not quite do it. It's okay though. Send in the creatures. And send out the indestructible one. Put it to counter on the treasure map. Mark the upkeep for the stop. What can they do now? A heroic reinforcements would make three chump blockers. And it is a mortify. Okay, staying alive. Our opponent showing the fight, showing a lot of grit. Another swamp can go to the bottom. Treasures come out. Off the top, it's another compass. Let's draw and see if we can draw the removal spell that would make this attack lethal. And there it is. A good game. I, I concur. That was that was a pretty epic little battle. Good sportsmanship. Bravo. And that will be this one. So I really enjoy the Lich Tribal deck. I think it's a fun deck. I think it's close to good. I just think that like you saw against white and like you might see against uh, red, like it has no way to deal with an experimental frenzy. So even with all your life gain, you can still get blown up. Also, Lich's Mastery is an insanely risky card. And now that Esper decks play Masterminds Acquisition in a lot more builds, 
they can go fetch things like a cleansing nova and you lose the game on the spot so this still isn't my this isn't a ranked deck of choice for me it's very much a fun side project it's also not bad in constructed events because it's pretty good against red unless they stick experimental frenzy and have the time to use it but if you really wanted to make phylactery lich work and you also have a soft spot for Lich's Mastery, I think this is a really sweet deck to play, and I hope that you try it and enjoy it. Well, this comes the part where I remind you about the War of the Spark giveaway box on FlipSideGaming.com. If you make a purchase on FlipSideGaming.com that is over $10 between now and May 6th, you might win a entire booster box of War of the Spark. Uh, which is pretty sweet. You just have to use the promo code CGB at checkout. It will do three things. It will save you 10%. It will support the channel at the same time. And finally, you might win an entire booster box of War of the Spark. You can also use that discount code to pre-order War of the Spark and to pre-order Modern Horizons. So check out FlipSideGaming.com and thank you to them for what they do to support, to support the channel. Thank you to all of you for what you do to support the channel. I'm going to be recording a special video in the next few days for members of my YouTube community. So wait for more information on that. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment. You can also support the channel on Patreon for special perks. Links are in the description. Our sponsors are hauntedflower.com and flipsidegaming.com. Haunted Flower sells officially licensed MTG apparel and accessories, and Flipside Gaming sells MTG cards and supplies. You can save 10% on either site with the promo code CGB, and it supports the channel at the same time. See you next time for another day in the arena. For now, it's me, it's CGB, signing out.